Okay, welcome to this week's episode of Love Summit. And if you saw our opening screen, it is episode C. Which is 100. Right. So that's 100 official Love Summit episodes. Now we've got some shorts thrown in and stuff like that, but this is our 100th. So we figured to celebrate that, we would do a long overdue tour. Of the Airstream. And kind of show you the features, why we bought it, why we like it. Mm -hmm. And kind of give you a look at what is the love sub exactly okay so first some historical context we bought our airstream on april 11th 2002 we brought it brand spanking new from donmar rv in south, south carolina yep right south off of i-95 right exactly it's still there too right it is still there we went there kind of thinking of a, buying a 19 foot bambi uh, yeah we we looked at three models we looked at the 19 foot bambi we looked at the ccd which right. was the same size as this one and then this one which is the international as right and this was actually 2002 was actually the first year that airstream came out with the ccd model which was their first attempt as you can see from this picture here to kind of break away from the, the your, classic look yeah from your grandmother's airstream or whatever you know this was the first attempt and so they ran both the as and the ccd to see which one kind of would take off right which and one i think did i think off. the ccd, <laughs> the took, CCD off. took off right right but we did a lot of changes to this which um we'll show you throughout this video here when we bought it we paid thirty six thousand five hundred and sixty five dollars that and was it, a lot of money for us back then yeah it was and that included one thousand seven hundred and seventy four dollars in options which you can see listed here But what was cool is that we had basically every option that we wanted. So I did the math. That $36,525 in today's terms would be $52,844 in today's money. Right. So that's still pretty, pretty good deal. Steep, but it, it's yeah. still steep a little bit. It is. But to replace this model, they don't make a 22, but they do make a 23 foot international. The current base price on the internet is $91,900. Right. So, uh, Ours seems like a pretty good deal compared to that. Now, I know not everybody pays the, price. the base price and stuff like that, but um, just that 52000 in today's dollars, 91000 yeah. base price, they're making a lot of money. Yeah. So let's go ahead and take a look at the Love Sub. Yep. And I think we're going to start up front. Yep. That All way. right, see, let's do it. So before we start our tour, let's take a look at the original sales brochure and see what she looked like when we bought her. Here we can see some pictures of the CCD model and things that are commonplace now like aluminum interiors, lucite cabinetry, and sheet colors were a radical idea back in 2002. So here's a picture of our model and you can see how beige everything looked from the beige carpet to the beige walls, including the refrigerator. And look at those valances with the interesting black and silver detail. We'll end with a quick look at the specifications and layouts for the 2002 International Model Year. All right, see, so before we get into the tour, why don't you go over some of the changes we made in 2007? Exactly. We had a big remodel in 2007. We wanted to, to change the look of the Airstream so it sort of fit our personality a little bit more. So we had the upholstery done in the dinette in colors that were my favorite color palettes. And we had the balances replaced with aluminum. And we had the flooring, which was beige carpet from one end to the other, which wasn't a good solution for the kitchen and also stepping out of a wet bath. So we had that replaced with marmoleum. And we also had the little carpet, gray carpet put in by the bed so that our feet wouldn't get cold when we stepped out of bed. Yes. So the other last thing we had replaced is over our wheel well. That was also beige carpeting if you can imagine that so that was put a vinyl veneer yeah it kind of matches the same wood everywhere else it was kind of a good deal right and we had all this professionally done this was yes. the part that we didn't do yes um, um yeah the upholstery looks great so we're not going to talk about the duvet or the shoe cubby or the 12 volt fan because we've already covered that in our top five favorite airstream improvements so check out that video so instead, we're going to talk a little bit about the mouse fur, which is one of the things that we like about this Airstream, because it keeps it feeling cozy and less sort of echoey. And so the other great benefit to the mouse fur is that things with Velcro will stick to it. And so we have that little storage cargo compartment, and we have this little storage cargo 
compartment. They're actually made to go into a car, but a worked perfectly as a little mini night table for me instead of having to reach over to this counter every night. So coming around, the other nifty thing that we've done is Rich put this little mirror in for me so that I could have a makeup station. So it is basically a picture frame that has been painted with a mirror inserted into it. It's on a hinge so it can come out when I need it and it can close and sit up against the wall with a hook when I don't. So it makes a nice little makeup station here while I sit on the bed. So this also has very nice storage. We have a big drawer underneath the bed here. We have a very large shelving unit That's right where our there. laundry bag goes on the bottom. Exactly. And we have three nice drawers. We also have a fairly big closet, as you can see, with a light. And a top compartment that we use mostly for hats. But it's extra storage. It's great. There's a running joke amongst Airstreamers, and I'm sure other RVers, that there is absolutely no way any of the design engineers ever spent the night in the rig. And this, there is no greater shining example of that than this. Because you can see, from a design perspective, yeah, it perfectly aligns with the edge of the bed. And there's a lot of decent feng shui in that. However, when you're sleeping, it took me about 10 years not to constantly crack your head against crack it. my head against this thing. And yeah, I Ouch. get it. I get it. A lot of the people who own these rigs cut it right here and use the heat gun to remove this, cut that. But my expertise is in electricity and plumbing. It is not in woodworking. So I just kind of bonked my head for 10 years and now I think I'm finally accustomed to it. All right, I'm gonna talk about our hallway here. But first, a lot of people buy these foam blocks, I guess they are, to shove up into their fantastic fan to keep the light from shining in, or they put an opaque cover on the top of that. But our solution is pretty easy. We have this quilted doily kind of thingy, right? Yeah. And we just got four Velcro dots. And every night before we go to bed, we just kind of hang this right up there and it definitely works for us. For the front door, which lets in a whole lot of light. This is I, a better solution. Yeah, I made up these things, they're all labeled for every window in the RV. And this was before we were going to Big Bend National Park in July. And so that just sits right like that. And that blocks out all the light there. And then when it's time to, everything of course has to have its stowage space. So that little guy fits there. And that little guy fits right in there. The other thing that's to emphasize is that we never stop improving and we're always trying to make things better. And just this week we added this little guy here and it's, really i think it looks kind of sharp it does um, look sharp we had suction cups here before where we would hang our checklists and our keys and they kept and, on falling off yeah because of the textured nature of this they don't work as well as they do on the aluminum or the plastic the suction cups but this is our latest improvement and if you stay tuned to the end of the video we've got an exciting announcement that might lead you to get our checklists for free all right we're going to move into the bathroom here and the first thing we had put in was this porthole. This did not come standard. And we did that so that we could have light shining in when we we're boondocking. But we're not boondocking right now, so we can turn that on. And our bathroom is a wet bath. And what that means is we shower, toilet, all in one. And you have this pull out thing. And, and we have a drain in the floor. Right. You see that here? And I know, I'm sure in the sales, when they're selling RVs, a wet bath is like a big turnoff. Everyone's like, oh, I don't want to have to do that. But think about it. When you're out camping, especially, you're probably showering only once every two days, right? And you're trying to conserve water or whatever, and you're probably only in there five minutes. So for the two of us, that's 10 minutes every two days. And that's just an incredible amount of wasted space in a tight space like this to save that amount of room for just basically 10 minutes every two days. And that we reap the benefit of that with having, a much larger galley. Yes, and I spend a lot more time in the galley and at the, this countertop than I do in this bathroom. Right, shower. so so for us, yeah, it's a pain in the butt. You have to dry it out, but it keeps everything nice and clean. We'll go ahead and check out some of our other features like this cool little toothbrush holder that we have from Camco. 
And what is that shower? What is that thing called? A joby or something? A jot. A jot. So also the jot that we use for pens and razors. So coming into the kitchen, I'm not going to talk about the refrigerator because we already have a video out on our refrigerator. It's a three cubic foot refrigerator. We do have some storage space underneath, which is nice. And then moving on in to the galley, I have a three burner stove and a gas lit oven, which was very important for me to have as opposed to like a convection or microwave. So if you come around, you can also see I have a nice little spice rack that's sort of inserted in there. And you can tell that I put a lot of suction cups and when you have a tiny space, getting things off your countertop is very important and that's what the walls are for. And so we have a knife block, which we've talked about in previous videos and various suction cups. We have suction cupped our paper towel holder. The only important thing is, is I have to take the paper towel holder off the holder before we travel or else it will completely itself. unwind itself. Exactly. So, and the other important thing when we purchased this Airstream was this large counter space. Right. Literally this kitchen is bigger than 25 and 27 footers. This is what sold this Airstream to me. Even though I did not like the interior as much as I did the CCD, I could not imagine cooking without this much counter space. So and the other nice thing it has is a big double sink, which makes doing dishes super, super easy. We've talked about previously in videos on how we store our dishes and glassware so that they don't break. Definitely check out that video. You can see so that here. It's a good here. video. And we have the uh, silverware drawer, we have a drawer for towels, and the dreaded roundabout. Roundabout. Which I think we've covered in about every video we've ever talked about being in our kitchen, how much we hate that thing. So we, and, and we have nice storage underneath the sink, and a big storage bin, which is super nice as well. Big improvement that we've made outside here is the addition of these aluminum tanks that we got from uh, vintage trailer supply and they're made by Worthington and what did they replace an ugly vinyl cover yeah right? you can see here they had this hideously ugly vinyl cover with steel tanks and I think they look a lot better now the one improvement I do have planned for a year or two down the road is trying to move these forward and to take this single battery box and move that into the back here where, like most Airstreams have their tanks forward and that allow me to have dual batteries. Right now we only have one battery and kind of like this ugly little plastic uh, case here. Yep. Now one other thing too that our Airstream is very unique about is that we don't have a belly pan. That's and true. So that makes it really a three season uh, RV. But, but there's some benefits to that. There are some benefits because the stuff that if you need to fix a propane leak or when our frame cracked. Um, we could tell. We could tell. So. I actually like being able to have the uh, belly pan off. And realistically, after owning this for 18 years, the only thing that's really gone wrong, big time, was the frame cracked. And that cracked on practically every one of these 2002, 2003, 2004, 22 footers. It was a known fault. Ours cracked in 2015. And Airstream absolutely did a- Phenomenal job. Ph yes, they treated us very very well it was a pain in the neck we had to go back, back to Jackson Center and you can see here the toe of shame but <laughs> they shame. um they did great and totally reinforced it and really that's the only big huge failure we've had other than just the little TFOAs and stuff like that so from an outside perspective really the only exterior storage we have is this one compartment now it's good because it's underneath the bed it's pretty good size but it's also good in that it's forward in the airstream which adds to our hitch weight versus say having a rear bed and having all of our heavy uh, hoses and connections and stuff like that in the rear of the rv because you want your weight to head up front and it was originally carpeted right and you replaced it with diamond plate yes that's a good point cindy talked about the carpet that was on the inside well airstream just carpeted the entire floor including this exterior storage compartment and if you're putting in wet hoses and stuff like that at the end of a wet day uh, yeah, you don't want that. So I took out all the uh, carpet and replaced it with this diamond plate. And don't forget to check out our brand spanking new website where you can find our checklist as well as some other information about us mm -hmm. and what we do here 
on YouTube. We're pretty excited about it. If you like this video, give us a big thumbs up and click to subscribe if you haven't already done so. And comment below if you like our improvements or if you have improvements that you've made to your trailer. And we come out with RV and Airstream related videos just like this every Tuesday. Thanks for watching.